If you've been watching this channel for a long time, it may not surprise you to know that I am in fact Dutch. Yeah, shall we just leave that until we solve this? <laughs> but in today's video, there's a bit of a conundrum to solve, and this is that in English, the word Dutch refers to people from the Netherlands and to the language spoken in the Netherlands as well as partially in Belgium and a few other places. However, the term Deutsch refers to people from Germany and to the German language. So in today's video, I want to figure out why are these two terms, Dutch and Deutsch, so similar but they refer to different people. It's worth noting at the start that this is partially because, well, these two words are found in different languages. Dutch is found in the English language, whereas Deutsch isn't actually an English word, it is a German word, so really we should be putting it in italics. But just, just to broaden this out slightly more, we can add to this that there is also a Dutch word, or two Dutch words, that come from the same root. One is Duits, and the other is Dietz. So what's going on here? Well, all of these words come from the same root in Proto-Germanic, which was Thudiskas, as it's been reconstructed, this term meaning something like of the people or of one's people, so referring back to a group of people indeed. And this survived into Old English, becoming Theodish, which uh, in Old English meant something like native, and we can actually see it here at the start of Beowulf. Quat ye gardena ingean dagum theod kuninga thrym se frumon, and so on. This theod meaning the people, as the name Theoden, such as in the Lord of the Rings, is ruler of the people or a prince. It survived into the Middle English language as Thedish, but it then disappeared and fell out of use. If it had survived, uh, it meant something again like native or endemic, and if it had survived into modern English, we might have it as Thedish or Theodish, but it does not, we have lost it. So it's clear then that this word that has come up from Proto-Germanic in English has had a sound change. The th at the start of the word has become a d in Dutch and Deutsch. And that is because this is a borrowed word, it hasn't come through English in the natural way. To compare, this is a very regular sound change that we find, where English does retain the th sound, but most of the continental Germanic languages do not. That's why you have, I thought that the thin thief thanked the thick thorn, whereas in Dutch it would be, ich dachte, dass der dünne Dief de dicke Dorn bedankte, and in German it would be, ich dachte, dass der dünne Dief dem dicken Dorn dankte. So you can see very clear correspondence between the th in English and the d in German and Dutch. So it seems then that Dutch itself was a loan word either from Middle Low German Dutch or from Middle Dutch Dutch, which then came into Middle English as Dutch later on getting the added t, although it was probably already pronounced in the same way. However, what's a little bit different about this Middle English usage of the word is that it doesn't just refer to Dutch people from the Netherlands, but it had a much broader meaning, meaning either German, Low German, or Dutch, so encompassing far more people and indeed various languages as well. So why was this the case? Why did this mean so much more back in the Middle English period? This is partially because of the political situation, as Germany as one German nation only really came about in 1871 with the proclamation of the German Empire. It had in the previous decade, since 1864, there had been a North German Confederation, but before that there was an idea of Germans and Germanness to a certain extent, however politically German speakers were very much more divided than they are today in a whole mix of different states. And indeed, for the longest time, the area of the Netherlands, the Low Countries, where we now recognize a distinction between Dutch and German, was also a part of that continuum and a large part of the Holy Roman Empire, with no helpful passports to tell us whether someone came from one side of a line or another side of a line. And to make matters more confusing, a lot of the time, those lines weren't exactly drawn out either. So then, when do English people start using this word Dutch, and who are they initially describing with this word? Well, in terms of the linguistic situation, we might look at an area called the Hanseatic League. 
These were a number of towns along the coasts of the North Sea and the Baltic Sea and several of the connecting rivers that functioned together as a kind of trading network. And along this line, we find various languages. So in parts of the Netherlands and Flanders, we find Dutch or Flemish being spoken. In the Frisian areas, we find Frisian being spoken. And then there is Low German, which is usually seen as a language of several different dialects distinct from High German, so standard German, uh, and its various dialects, which are spoken further south to this area. Because there were so many different Germanic languages and indeed some Slavic languages spoken further east by towns of the Hanseatic League, the traders took up Low German as a kind of lingua franca to be able to communicate across linguistic barriers with a common language. And quite a few charters and other things from the Hansa survive in Low German to this day. Now note that Low German in German a lot of the time is called Plattdeutsch, again with this Deutsch element being descended from that theodisk word in Proto-Germanic, meaning of the people. Now, what's interesting is that another term for Plattdeutsch or Low German is Niederdeutsch. And here we again have the Deutsch, but we also have Nieder, meaning low or flat. And this is actually where the Dutch get their word Nederland to describe the Netherlands, again, that D to TH shift going into English, for their own country, for the Netherlands itself. And I think this period is crucial because at this point you had uh, the language of the people, so the vernacular language of Low German being spoken by the Hansa traders, so therefore coming from that root of Theodisk, of, of the people, while in contrast you had the clergy who at that point were speaking Latin, so that was the language of the church as opposed to the language of the people. And at this point I think the um, people in England will have borrowed the word of Dutch either from Middle Dutch or from Middle Low German and because the people speaking Germanic languages that they were most in touch with were people involved in the cloth trade in Antwerpen or with other Hansa traders along that North Sea and Baltic Sea coast that word Dutch for the people's language then became a word for Germans Dutch people people speaking in a slightly funny way that we trade with across the sea. However, an important development would be the Reformation, as Martin Luther was of course himself a German speaking an East Franconian dialect of German. Now because most of Northern Germany would become Lutheran after this point, after Martin Luther, the dialect that he had written in was very important and influential for the development of the standardized German language. However, in the Netherlands, most people did not become Lutherans, but rather Calvinists, following the teachings of Jean Calvin, a slightly later Protestant teacher. And for this reason, we get a standard Bible that is written in a dialect of Dutch at the time, which would go on to be very influential, that was different to the German standards being produced based on those teachings of Martin Luther. It's worth noting though that into the 18th century, the way that people in the Dutch Republic would describe their language was as Nederdeutz. So again, that low German, very confusingly, because in English that translates to low German, but it's not actually low German as it's used in English, which is their description of Plattdeutsch, which is the German way of saying Nederdeutz. So you can see how this becomes incredibly confusing incredibly quickly. Now the Dutch Republic is established in 1579 and from that point on there is a political entity with the word Dutch in the name as it's described in England. Of course they would also use terms like Holland, Netherland, Low Country uh, and, and other things of that ilk. But from that point on I think this is the major changing point when the Dutch Republic is established that people in England start to differentiate between that separate political entity in the area of the Low Country countries with those of the Holy Roman Empire and territories outside of that region where they were speaking different languages, be it Low Frisian, uh, sorry, be it Low German or High German itself. So the term Dutch starts to get a more specific meaning towards the 
people and the language from the specifically the Netherlands or the Dutch Republic. Now around the same time we get the introduction of the word German into English which then also gets a more specific meaning of meaning people not from the Netherlands but from areas of Germany where they're speaking German although this is before Germany is a state. So this actually comes from the Latin term Germanus, which comes from Germania, which is how the Romans referred to the area of uh, where the Germanic tribes were living. And so this becomes a learned borrowing into English, although probably from ecclesiastical Latin, which is why it's German rather than German today. And we find the first use of German in English in 1520, as far as I am aware. More on the various names of Germany and why it has so many names in different languages in a video I did about that. But let's quickly cross over the Atlantic Ocean because the in the Americas the word Dutch has a broader meaning for a longer time. And this is why we get for instance the Pennsylvania Dutch, the kind of Amish-like Anabaptist Mennonite figures that we see across various states in the eastern USA. Um, sort of similar in their beliefs as some of the Olendez who went over to uh, Poland um, although the ones that went to Poland were actually Dutch, whereas the Pennsylvania Dutch mostly came from southern Germany and their language isn't Dutch at all. Their language actually is based on a sort of Rhenish dialect of High German, so not Dutch. And during the American Civil War, a lot of the times when Germans were being described or German regiments, they were referred to as Lopier Dutch or Yankee Dutchmen or Dutchies which makes researching the actual Dutchmen that fought in the American Civil War and indeed the Germans a little bit more difficult because we're sometimes not really aware whether the people being described were actually from Germany or German-speaking areas or from the Netherlands themselves. Now, of course, in 1871, the German Empire would be proclaimed. And so you had for the first time both a German state and a Dutch state, which was already established in the late 16th century to differentiate where people came from. And in the United States in particular, after their entry into the First World War and later on in the Second World War, I think that's really when Dutch and German got their specific meanings that they no longer could be used for, for anyone. Um, although I know that the nickname Dutch is was fairly popular in the United States as a character in Red Dead Redemption called Dutch, for example. And we're not actually, I mean, he's called Von Linde, so he's probably Dutch. But a lot of these, these nicknames Dutch could also be applied to German, but that probably fell out of use following the World Wars um, because of obvious reasons, because Americans were actually reading about these places in the newspapers and Germans became the enemy, etc. So as a helpful chart, let's take a look at what all these words mean in the different languages. So if we're looking at Dutch, we have the term Duits which now only specifically refers to people from Germany or the German language. There is also another term that has branched off from that original root, which is Dietz, and this is more generally used for Dutch or Dutch-speaking people or Germanic. So there is a kind of Dietzland idea, which is wanting a, a greater Netherlands to reincorporate Flanders and potentially South Africa and, and wherever else where they, they speak a Dutch-like language. If we move over to German, we have the term Deutsch, which is used for Germans, people from Germany, as well as the German language. And in English, the word Dutch now specifically means people from the Netherlands, apart from special cases like Pennsylvania Dutch, for example, whereas it formerly had been a broader term, which included people from Germany, Germans, German speakers, etc. So that is the uh, rather complex history of where these terms come from in German and in Dutch and with plenty of low German mixed in as well. Let me know, did you enjoy this video? Did you already know about where the words Deutsch and Dutch came from? If you're uh, one of the people involved with the Anglish movement, would you like Theodish to come back? I believe there's a forefather song that's called Theodish Belief or, or something of that ilk. Um, although that would probably just make things more confusing. Uh, and would, would Dutch then be used simply for people from the Netherlands or for people speaking a, a Germanic language? It's probably easier using the terms German and Dutch these days, I think. But I thought this was an interesting video nonetheless. Feel free to check out some of my other videos on related topics and let me know in the comments if you enjoyed it and what else you would like to see a video on. Thank you very much for watching. I have been Hilbert and this has been The History.